Hello, and welcome to this edition of the CSIAC podcast series. In today's episode, we'll be conducting a review of the best practices that can help enhance any organization's software security practices, whether using traditional, agile, or DevOps methods. As software becomes more complex, it is important to design in security from the very beginning of the system development. Incorporating security control measures early on in the software development process will benefit in terms of cost savings and manpower utilization. This will occur throughout the life cycle, thus increasing both the reliability and the maintainability of the software. A comprehensive software development cycle begins with the definition of detailed requirements. Absence of quantifiable requirements can lead to project delays as well as a project going over budget. For any software application, security requirements must be based on confidentiality, integrity, and availability also known as the CIA triad. We will take a look at these principles in more detail. Confidentiality refers to the process of preventing the unauthorized access of information. Such misuse of information can lead to serious adverse effects on an organization. The process of utilizing a technique such as multi-factor authentication can help prevent unauthorized use. Integrity guards against the improper modification or destruction of information. It also ensures information non-repudiation, accuracy, and authenticity. Configuration management tools can help detect and prevent unwanted changes by conducting integrity checks for an application. Availability refers to ensuring the timely and reliable access to information. Utilization of techniques such as virtualization and data redundancy can help prevent against non-accessibility of software. Security testing must focus on the structure of the code as well as the data sources of a software application. White and black box testing are two commonly used approaches that can help uncover weaknesses in an application. Gray box testing is a combination of both these approaches which can help to mitigate the risks from potentially exploitable vulnerabilities. White box testing is performed by developers that have integral knowledge of the software. Utilizing source code analysis, a developer can identify logic issues such as error handling and untrusted data inputs that can compromise security due to exposed sensitive data. The basic idea is for a developer to think like a hacker. Black box testing does not utilize the source code. It focuses on testing inputs to software in a runtime environment. This approach utilizes random inputs to ensure that the code does not break. It focuses on testing the software to ensure that it performs only its intended functionality. It is equally important to secure your infrastructure. It is critical to develop a plan for the network and the devices in use. Default passwords must be changed and unnecessary features should be disabled. Once in use, all devices should be monitored 
and upgraded as specified. Utilizing a combination of a firewall and an intrusion detection system can provide the first line of defense and help to defend against potential attacks. Devices such as routers and switchers should be configured to provide a basic log analysis feature. This can provide insights into potential unauthorized access to files and any unapproved changes to baseline configurations. Let's take a look at the process of analyzing software code. First up, static analysis is the examination of code performed in a non-runtime environment. The manual method can help to avoid false positives that are encountered through the use of scanning tools. A static code analysis can ensure that one understands what the code does by reading it. In comparison, dynamic code analysis is performed in a runtime environment. Automated tools and applications can help identify vulnerabilities that may not show up in a static analysis. Dynamic tests will monitor system memory, response time, and overall performance. Scans can validate findings conducted through peer reviews or a static analysis. Scanning tools can automate and augment the code review process when provided with the complete source code and libraries. However, there is a need to be mindful of false positives from these tools. Commercial off-the-shelves or COTS software products may consist of operating systems, web browsers, databases, or web servers. GOTS are government off-the-shelf products, and these may be reliant on COTS products. COTS products, used as is, are prone to vulnerabilities and need to be hardened. This involves changing default settings and disabling unwanted services. Any COTS products should be patched as soon as vulnerabilities are identified and updates are available. Any unsupported software systems should be removed from your system. And if using open source software, one needs to review this product to ensure that the source software is reliable. It's recommended that an organization consider one of the various frameworks to develop secure software. One possibility is the Software Assurance Maturity Model, or SAM. This offers a strategy on compliance with security standards. This model can help ensure that an application is not vulnerable and continues to meet mission requirements at the same time. There's also the open source development model that focuses on software assurance as well as continuous monitoring in order to curtail the risk from open source software oriented errors. Now the IEEE also has a guide which you might consider for utilization. Continuous monitoring is a key to countering emerging threats. Incorporating the aforementioned security considerations early on in the development process can lead to cost and time savings in software and help minimize weaknesses. These best practices, if followed, are meant to help an organization mitigate risk and curb vulnerabilities that can ex be exploited in code. If you're interested in more details on the subject topic, I recommend you check out the associated paper on our website. That's at www.csiac.org. It also has a list of references that you can find additional information on. On behalf of the CSIAC, we would like to thank you for viewing this podcast. We hope you found the content useful and informative. If you would like to provide us with feedback, please comment on this video or visit our website at www.
C-S-I-A-C dot O-R-G, where you can also find additional content to review. Thank you. Did you know that CSIEC offers free monthly webinars featuring experts in the areas of cybersecurity, software engineering, modeling and simulation, and knowledge management? Come see leading industry professionals talk about industry practices and leading research. Make sure to visit www.csiec.org forward slash webinars in order to subscribe to our mailing list and see when the next webinar series is available. There you can also watch previous webinar series to catch up. Visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars.